Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Um, lucky enough to have the day off today, so have been just pottering around with uh, making up a, a quick and easy little uh, amplify here just to amplify the output of the 9850 DDS uh, and get on air and uh, just confirm that um, the software is all working fine uh, and I'm being decoded. So far, so good. So uh, that little amplifier there is producing uh, 60 milliwatts uh, into a the 200 ohm uh, antenna. Uh, just confirm that with a, a 200 ohm resistor across the output. Uh, I'll talk about that circuit in a sec. Uh, and like I say, that was being well, that was is being detected uh, in Australia, so that's good. So if we just look up there, we can see that at least two stations on this last refresh are picking that up, and um, I've had up to four, so not too bad. Well, admittedly, all on the east coast, but uh, good just to confirm that the software is working correctly and. Um, the signal was being decoded uh, at the other end, so that's good. So I'll keep potting, potting around with that. Um, so that little amplifier there, uh, just a very simple, um, didn't put too much thought into it, just wanted to sort of get something up and running uh, just to get going. It is a, uh, it's a 2N3053. Um, I elected to put 50 milliamps through it as a, um, a quiescent current, uh, a little bit higher than normal, but I thought just to sort of up the the power that I'm going to produce with this, it would be just better to get a little bit higher than that. Uh, the beta DC, again, just the geometric mean from the minimum and maximum from the spec sheet, comes out at 111, uh, and the output there is an FT50-43, which uh, I'll talk to in a sec. Um, in terms of uh, biasing resistors, uh, again, just very simply, it's a 13.8 volt VCC, so uh, I'm just going to set the voltage at the emitter at uh, a tenth of that, or 1.38 volts. Um, I said that my quiescent current through it was going to be 50 milliamps, so Ohm's law, 1.38 divided by 50 milliamps means I need to have, which is good actually because it's spot on a, um, a, a, a normal value for resistor, 27 ohms uh, for the emitter resistor. Uh, and just notionally I just got to fully bypass it with a 100 nanofarad capacitor. Uh, our voltage divider biasing here uh, for R1 um, in fact I've got that back to front that should be R1 so again R1, R2 but I've written these back to front but never mind, in fact I'll correct that now because otherwise it's confusion right yeah, so the bottom resistor R2 uh, that would need to be the, the voltage at the emitter plus 0.7 so 1.38 plus 0.7 and then we want to have through the circuit here 10 times the, uh, the base current to keep that nice and stiff um, so our base current, as we know, is our emitter, um, or our collector current, which is essentially exactly the same as the emitter current, uh, albeit uh, the difference of one or the base current. So 50 milliamps divided by 111, which was our beta DC we had before, um, times 10, and then do the ohms law there, comes out at 461. So we use a standard value of 470 ohms. Um, R1, so the upper resistor now, uh, the voltage across that is going to be 1.38 and the other end is going to be again that 1.38 plus 0.7 which is what we see there and then we have in terms of current going through it um, the 10 milliamps, so again the 10 times the base current which is going through uh, R2 plus now an additional 1, makes 11 times the base current so 11 times our 50 milliamps divided by 111 comes out at 2365 ohms, so we'll use 220 ohms. So like I say, just a quick and easy, simple little amplifier just to get up on here and see how we're going. Now for that output transformer there, um, I'm using a, a half wave dipole here uh, with uh, some twin flex uh, transmission lines, so I'm going to assume that's going to be roughly 200 ohms there. Uh, I wanted to present to the collector 200 ohms anyway. Um, so I've got a one-to-one -one transformer there to uh, transform that 200 ohms across to be 200 ohms in the collector circuit. So in the end, um, to make, keep that nice and simple, uh, I've used a T50-43. Uh, I've got 10 by fire returns uh, in that configuration. Um, and that's all I'll say about that. So let me just come back across here again. So that's exactly what we see down here. So if I can just sort of zoom up. Yeah, not very well. Um, now, because I've got 50 milliamps going through that as a quiescent current, 
it, it doesn't get stinking hot but it gets a little bit warm so just for the fact that the duty cycle is so high on a whisper transmitter uh, where it's only for every two minutes um, quiet for roughly 10 seconds um, I've just got a little fan here out of a computer just providing a little bit of cooling for it um, but again this, this is not going to be the final amplifier uh, it's just something I'll be playing around with to test um, I checked the mail before and what did turn up which was uh, this little device here which I'm going to play around with uh, according to the, um, the specifications for that it's like I say it's here DC to 500 megahertz runs on 5 volts uh, you can have a, a variable gain here from this it's like it says here it's 45 dB maximum gain and uh, you can do one of two things you can either uh, vary the, the little trim pot here or you can provide a, uh, a DC voltage between 0 and 1 volts on that port there which will actively change the gain in that so um, that turned up from um, AliExpress so I'm, I'm going to play around with that um, in lieu of that amplifier there. This was again, as I just said before, just for testing purposes. So I might play around with this one um, and what I may do with the just to go down a little bit, the high power and low power um, toggle, I'm sort of half tempted to maybe just use a very simple voltage divider um, with a couple of resistors being switched on and off using a, a transistor so I have the transistor being switched on and off from the discrete coming out of the Arduino to control um, the high-low power and then provide either one volt or we'll see, see what it needs to be but uh, for argument's sake let's say it was half a volt and then switch you know, between one and half a volt there to change the overall gain on that to give me what I am ideally want to get out of this. Um, I'm still debating based on today's experiments and noting that uh, 60 milliwatts is getting into Australia no problems I'm now rethinking uh, what I've currently got uh, encoded into the, the whisper signal which was uh, 50 milliwatts and 100 milliwatts I'm, I'm now thinking that maybe I should start at say 60 milliwatts and 30 milliwatts uh, just to see how we go um, the intent well my intent wasn't to see if I could get around the whole world it was just more the point just to sort of play around with the logic there so uh, that's what I'm thinking about doing um, and I think that's probably about all actually so I'll just keep plodding along here uh, I've got another one of these or a similar amplifier turning up which uh, is not variable gain it's just a, a set uh, again of I can't quite remember 26 dB I think um, there was a suggestion in, in an earlier um, video that I should try potentially using some of these off-the-shelf amplifiers so that's the reason why I'm using this one um, as opposed to in the final circuit uh, using a homebrew one like this one up here. Honestly, it, it doesn't really worry me, I don't mind either way. Right, okay, I'll say 73s and start rambling and uh, put this up just for interest sake and uh, continue playing on. Okay, cheers all.